Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob, and today we're going to be painting a White Scars jet bike, but with a sponge. Welcome back everybody, and welcome to you if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos. Uh, I describe them as the Ryanair of uh, painting tutorials, no A and B uh, re real, uh, real here. Uh, so uh, we're gonna start off uh, with Uniform Grey Primer by the Army Painter, and we're gonna use Cardro Grey and Matte White. Now, because these are air paints, these are all quite thin, and they are perfect uh, for sponging. So this is a great alternative if you don't own, own an airbrush, or you wanna do uh, White Scars miniatures really quickly. Um, I think that using a sponge gives really good texture to the overall feel and look of the model as well. Uh, and this is Cardray Grey. It's a super light grey, uh, this color. Um, and you could almost, if you wanted to do kind of just like a super off-white, then you know this this would be fine if you wanted to make your white scars like this. But I didn't add any water to this because they're part of the air range. They're already very, very thin, um, but they are perfect for building up thin layers um, for, for sponging up this white. Um, what you'll see in a bit is I use a, a larger sponge, and, and this kind of sponge is just a, a, a kitchen sponge, basically, one that has a Brillo uh, pat, uh, uh, kind of patch on the bottom and I just rip that off and, and use it and it's a kind of very close-knit sponge um, but it's literally perfect for all the hobbying that I do and um, it relatively cheap as, uh, as well right you get it for a couple of quid you get like eight of them in a in a pack so I go around the entire uh, model I'm not worrying too much just yet about um, kind of like light and modulation on the uh, on it um, I just want to try and hit as much of the jet bike as possible try and get into all those nooks and uh, all those nooks and crannies um, we'll worry about kind of doing a little bit of highlighting uh, highlighting later uh, but of course because we're using a sponge we can't get into the deepest recesses there are going to be parts with this sponge that we can't get into so there'll be some contrast just naturally we'll create some uh, through this process uh, which you know it has a really uh, you know it has a good impact I think uh, when you're looking at the model so you can see here this is what it looks like with after the kind of the bigger sponge is, is done with and there are definitely some areas that I need to get into um, with a smaller sponge so you just use a pair of tweezers a couple of quid from a I don't know like boots or whatever pharmaceutical shop or whatever you, you you might have nearby and just try and get into all those nooks and crannies uh with uh with the smaller sponge again though there'll be some parts that you won't be able to get into um and there'll be some parts that you'll probably want to leave that uniform gray color uh that we had before you'll notice that i'm not doing their housing at the back uh i do a little bit underneath the um the jet bike but but not too much it'll be in darkness right like can't get into it um and then the kind of like the engine housing at the front i'm leaving that completely gray because i'm going to paint that metallic as you saw right at the start and then the underside as well um i'll just make that all silver a little bit later so there's not actually that much white to, to kind of do on this uh on this model and then we're going to go straight to matte white now uh the jump between the two is uh is quite big but if you just blend it in just exactly as i did then um and uh if you wanted to you could mix matte white and cardro gray together to almost be you know a, a nice a smoother blend up to that pure white i just went with pure white i was trying to get this model done in about 90 minutes um, just to see if I could do it, see if I could do something very quickly for you guys, um, particularly if you want to do a White Scars Army uh, army fast. Um, and you can see that I'm starting to think about a little bit of uh, modulation on the, uh, on, the, um, on the front here. So basically at the side at the bottom, I want it to be that cadre grey colour, but at the top I want it to be um, uh, pure pure white and then in between is almost like a mix between the two and the sponge is a great tool to be able to do this um, and I think that you know I think I had this image of this white scars uh, pilot this biker um, being at the siege of terror and I wanted his armor to have quite a lot of texture in it because um, you know from where there's been battle damage to it and it's been painted over etc and then exactly the same here so I go in with a smaller sponge and I'm just going over the top of that matte white just to bring out the brightness you know the more 
matte white that you use, the stronger, the opacity of the colour is more, obviously. So, um, uh, you know, it, the brighter it will it will appear. So the typically top areas uh, that you would want your um, your highlights to be, uh, you can just hit with this with this smaller sponge as well. Um, so the also the edges of those uh, those those fins. Uh, I did give it a gloss varnish here with a rattle can. Uh, so again, I didn't use any airbrushing for for this model at all. You know, a, a gloss varnish um, th through rattle can is relatively cheap and easy to use as well. I use it all the time. Um, and we don't need to mask off a whole lot of areas here because there'll be no overspray from an airbrush. Obviously, we're going to use a sponge again to be able to do this next part. Just make sure that the masking tape is super tight. Um, I often use um, uh, kind of, you know, maybe like Tamiya masking tape it tends to use something quite low tack um, because we don't want it to rip off the 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 paint. Um, but just make sure it's nice and tight. We're going to use Incarmine Red as a base color, um, and it's a really nice one for you know a base color for either corn warriors or corn berserkers, whatever they're called, and um, and a base colour for Blood Angels Red as well. But I thought that this colour worked really, really nicely for White Scars as a base colour. Um, and you can see here, because the gloss varnish is on, it's uh, going to take a couple of layers to be able to build up, because what's going to happen is the paint's just basically going to rebound off that gloss varnish. Uh, but it will create you know, we need the, the masking tape on there and we need that gloss varnish obviously to protect those areas. But we've just built it up. You can use a hairdryer in between these stages as well and that will help you to build it up. And then I went to that pure red. And again, exactly as I did with the matte white before, I basically am just highlighting the, the tippity top areas, leaving some um, of that, uh, that original red that we were using uh, kind of in the darker darker areas and you can kind of add the modulation with the sponge as little or as much as you might want to but as you can see those two colors combined on top of one another make a perfect white scars red right it's you know looks great against the looks great against the white peel it away really simple and then you've got uh, a bit of variety to your uh, bit of variety to your white scars and you can do that however you want to you know i'm sure there's lots of different patterns that you can uh, you can create now what i did find though uh, with this was that um, i had a little bit of areas you can just see really closely on the video here uh, where I had a little bit of sponging overspray, I guess, or sp over sponge. Um, and what I'm just doing is I'm taking a knife and just scratching it away. So the, I'm really confident that the gloss varnish will be able to protect um, the, the paint job underneath. Um, but you can just scratch that away. You know, I, I didn't even bother to, to repaint it. I'm going to do a little bit of battle damage in a bit. But yeah, just scratch it away. That's absolutely fine. And it will get, it'll be a really nice, um, you know, sharp edge. Uh, I'm going to use matte white here. Now I'm using uh, one of the war paint colors, not the air version, because I need this color to have a bit of bite to it. Um, because if I was to do the air color over the red, it would basically be a pink. You would be able to see some of the red underneath uh, that white color, and that's not what we want. So I would recommend for any battle damage that you do, you know, use a color uh, which has high op opacity, which means that yeah, it's got a bit of bite to it, right? If you put it down, you won't see the underlying color underneath. And, you know, this is a painted on red uh, triangle. Um, so we've got to make sure uh, that um, it looks painted on by chipping some of the paint away. So just do some, you know, scratches. Uh, sponge is a great tool for this, uh, for creating uh, kind of scratches for that. So we're going to use uh, some speed paints now. Um, I'll come back to the metallic speed paints in a bit because I use more than just those ones. But blood red and hardened leather are two that I use all the time, particularly hardened leather. If you're looking for a quick and easy leather recipe, um, look no further than uh, a white and then hardened leather over the top of it. Uh, you need for... Um, basically, when you're doing white scars, right, if I'm putting down a speed paint for one part and then a red colour on another part, and they're two different kinds of paints. We need them to be a reasonable color match. We don't want different kinds of red all over our model. Um, now, I just use the speed paint because there is pretty quick and effective. It there's obviously because of the nature of it, you know, it creates some contrast in the in in the deepest parts. And I'm not using a lot of red on this model. 
um, you know, just just on the uh, on the uh, shoulder pads and some of the motifs on the on the chest as well. Um, but I'm not going to bother going around doing all the um, all the little bits of trim here and there uh, red. So I felt that actually these areas were perfect to use this speed paint on. As you can see, it's created some natural um, uh, kind of like contrast from where it's just pulled into the recesses. But we'll also um, take that to the next level by using some oil washes a little bit later all over it so that will in enhance it as well um, and it's also really important that we do that in this order as well so um, I'm going to do a little bit of battle damage later but you need to have all these stages done first and then we can do the battle damage on on top of that okay so this is what it looks like it's a fairly good color match between the two and then we are going to um, do the metallics. So I'm going to show you some speed paints today, some speed paint metallics by the Army Painter. Um, I've not seen any other company do kind of a similar product before. So we're going to use these three speed paints and we're going to mix them one to one to one. And it makes this really nice dark bronze color. Now I was experimenting with a lot of this. I have never, I've painted white scars a little bit, maybe one or two models, um, but this is kind of really the, the first model that I've done all the way through properly. Um, and so I was totally experimenting and I was like, you know what, let's just throw these colors together. Let's see what we create. And it creates a really, really nice bronze color, which is perfect uh, against the white. You know, it's nice and dark. Um, it's not like a, a light gold. You know, the problem with light gold and white next to each other is they're obviously quite light colors together. So we need more contrast within that. But I wanted almost like a corrupted dark bronze gold color um, to offset the uh the the white um and i think this was this was perfect now being a speed paint the idea is obviously that you have like a white or a cream or a gray undercoat and then you lay this over and then it pours into the into the recesses so you have some natural highlighting now what i did find actually was the coverage was just quite good that it just went over the entire um entire thing and the edges were certainly i would say um felt highlighted but we will enhance that a little bit further i just thought really what i liked about these speed paints was that they just flowed really nicely over um uh, uh, over this housing here and over the other parts that i'll paint metallic later and often i find that sometimes metallic paints can be, just be so gloopy uh, that it's just a real hassle to be able to kind of get a, a, a nice coat over them but really to get speed to it you know constantly having to go back with these gloopy metallic paints uh from some companies whereas these speed paints they just flowed really nicely and it really took no time at all it took a few minutes to get the housing done and uh, any other gold parts uh, done as well i painted the shield gold um his knee pad gold and then i made a, a plate on his leg um gold as well or oh, kind of like this off bronze color whatever you want to call it but i think that making um like plates on them just here and there i think is quite quite cool for a bit of contrast a bit of interest and then this is just the broadsword silver um color and again you can see how nicely it flows you can see definitely now um we've got the kind of like the edges of um of the parts we're hitting with this silver kind of standing out so there's some like natural highlighting being created now what you could al always do and, and as i was putting this down i was like oh maybe i should have done this but i did consider oh if i just had dry brushed this bit white um then those edges would really pop um and it would save me a job of kind of like edge highlighting later maybe i didn't bother doing that because it was a thought that i had that occurred to me whilst i was doing it but maybe you know consider um either sponge edge highlighting um all the engine parts or um uh, just you know dry brushing with 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 pure white and then the edges will stand out but you'll get something that looks like this right um and you'll notice i haven't done the leather parts just yet we'll come back to those a little bit later but we're going to do some battle damage now now i'm going to use um a great color which is kind of like a gray brown which should be coming up any second now just bear with me da -da -da. And here we go, dark stone, really nice color. So it hasn't got that kind of, it, it's really nice against white, I think. You want something relatively quite subtle. You don't want something as stark as oak brown or oak brown mixed with black, which is what I usually use uh, for most plate. But with white, we just want something a little bit softer to demonstrate the kind of like the ceramite underneath. Now, um, the sponge, as you've seen me do before, 
can create lots of different kind of scratches and it would be more natural i think here to create scratches just exactly as i'm doing so on those edges you can hit it just like we would with an like a dabbing with a sponge but on parts um this is just me taking off a little hair that got caught i think in the in the matte varnish um but we um but you can see here i'm just creating scratches and it looks really natural it looks like a jet bike that has been uh you know that's picking up dust and picking up soot and all those sorts of things you know be it this battle damage or grime or soot or whatever it could be a whole host of things that whatever you want it to be um but use the sponge to create scratches uh, scratching effects i think is the best way to go about it uh you can see that i'm doing this over the metal parts as well you know dense indentations on the metal grime building up on the metal this is what this basically represents um and also i'm doing it on his uh shoulder pads as well you know i'm treating that as if it was painted uh, painted ceramite rather than say like painted red metal or just red metal or whatever so just give it a, a hefty uh, hit of uh, dark stone all over and then um, we can do the other parts that probably wouldn't have kind of like indentations on them so all the leather parts uh, as well we'll do this after so what i'm going to do now is go around with our uh, matte white war paint that we were using before for our chipping and i'm just picking out and dry brushing the edges i have learned from uh, from doing the silver elements but this is a great way a quick way just to create some kind of like leather looking material so just pick out make some scratches do some dry brushing do some over brushing doesn't need to be neat doesn't need to be tidy i'm not i'm you know leaving some areas in darkness some places that even got caught by that um that battle damage from before um and then he's got on his shield a little kind of like tail thing i guess like a i'm not even sure what it is but i thought a nice pop of blue would be be quite nice uh so i've mixed uh hydro blue and uh plasmatic oh sorry caribbean blue and plasmatic bolt here um and then just did that for the little um uh tail thing or, or whatever it might be and then hardened leather uh just one coat of hardened leather it goes really nicely into all the recesses and i can you know if you want it to be a darker version just go over it a second time right but um i i really like uh like this if you want a quick and easy way to do leather for your marines for those holsters which are always such a hassle um hassle to do then this is a really quick and easy way to go about doing it just make sure you just give it a quick overbrush or dry brush of uh white just to create kind of like a scratchy effect um and then just hit it with the the hardened leather of course you know, I think one of the things I would say about this process as well, though, is that you do need to be super careful, you know, with the speed paints, obviously they flow so easily. So you d you need to be neat and tidy. You can't just slap this on and then expect to be able to cl clean it up later. You know, you've done all that hard work on the white. And that's the thing about the white scars. You know, you, you can't afford to really mess it up too much. So just be super careful. You know, we've used a sponge. We've been really quick. But we need to spend time being neat and tidy later on. So uh, Payne's Grey mixed with Burnt Umber, mixed with a bit of Buff Titanium. This is a great mix. Um, these are all oil colours, um, oil paints. Um, and I guess I would liken to this like dirty cement grime. You know, you guys will decide whatever you know colour you want to oil wash it with. You might want to go more brown, so go with Burnt Umber. Um, I wanted a colour that looked like this, a really kind of grimy dirt colour, right? Um, and this really, this is really where it comes all together because this will flow into all those nooks and crannies. This will create kind of like a dusty, grimy look over the entire tank. It will, it's a, it does a lot of the heavy lifting. You know, there was a long time ago, a few years back, where everybody's dousing things in streaking grime uh, and then cleaning it off, just as I'm about to do here. And this is the process is basically the same. Um, but it does the, the the oil paints do a lot of the heavy lifting because it just adds some definition to the model it adds that griminess to the model um, in a way that if we were to do this with acrylic paints it would it would be a very arduous uh, kind of process um, but it it masks some very simple styles of painting that we've just done you know with a sponge um, but uh, 
allows a lot of definition across the model. So yeah, great great way to go about doing your scars, but it's up to you what kind of oil paint you want to you want to use. You know, if they're in a dusty landscape, it might be worth using kind of like a a dusty colored oil paint. If um if you like the look of burnt umber, then just use that, right? I would avoid anything kind of rust colored though, I think just for me personally. I don't I think it will look too much against the um against the white. So go around uh, with Cottonwool Bud with some dips in some clean white spirit and just go around and clean it off. I think I used only two or three Cottonwool Buds to do an entire jet bike. Um, and I did this after it was dry. Now, I just blast it with a hairdryer for a couple of minutes and then I'm good to go, right? You know, it, that that's fine with me. Some people will say you need to wait 24 hours, whatever, you know, fine. Do whatever you think is best, but I just blast it with a hairdryer for five minutes and I'm, I'm good to go. And this is what it looks like. Just wait until it was uh, dry and you can wipe it away. Problem is, if you leave it for too long, is that it will stain the white underneath and that might not be necessarily be a look that you want. I still want it to be, I still wanted it to read as white um with some grime over the top and you can just see here the the way that i'm stri almost streaking it i'm creating some kind of other effects on top of that with the way that i'm um uh, streaking that cotton wool uh, cotton wool bud there and this is what it looks like so far so i gave it a a, a matte uh, matte spray with the army painter uh it was just a rattle can no airbrush again and then that original color that we put down uh i'm just using just sponging that on here just to pick out the highlights basically you know essentially kind of dry brushing but just creating some like indentations with a sponge nice and simple right you know but just bring some of the luster back because we've just matted we just oiled down those metallics we've just matted them down they look nothing like metallics anymore in the way that they did before so just bringing back some of the luster here i think is a, a good way to have some of that contrast between the mat of the plate and then the um, all the metallic elements. I mixed in a little bit of silver into that um, that that mix that we had as well, uh, just to lighten it up from there. For that, I use plate mail metal, uh, which is just a nice bright silver, uh, and it's one of the um, air metallics for this one. And then just go around giving it some scratches, give it some uh, sponging, uh, just to kind of highlight it, bring a bit, a bit of luster back to those uh, metallic elements. And then what we need to do is move on to the head. Now, I haven't done the a head tutorial here. Um, I've done one of my Dark Angels um, uh, video that I did recently uh, with the Deathwing. So you can go check that out. But I would really recommend spending a bit of time on the head because that will be a focal point of the uh, of the model. So we've done the, the whole model quite quickly, um, you know, within 90 minutes. But I think it's really worth if you've got bare heads spending some time on them because obviously they're, as I said, they're a focal point. But this is the fi finished jet bike. So we've got that matte of the plate now. We've got a really grim, grimy look to it. All done with a sponge. It's got pretty good coverage. You, I think you've struggled to tell whether it was done with an airbrush. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're watching this for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and don't forget to comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.